What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Tesla Spy and video, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I want to break down what's going on with the economic calendar moving forward. What's happening with news involving Tesla and what you should be watching for as time progresses. But before I break things up all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you guarantee 20 free stocks and offerings very soon in just about two days from now. Anyways, now let's break down what's happening with the market moving forward. Looking at Tesla, we had a bit of a red day because of the warning I told you guys about. I mentioned to everyone that Tesla may pop and drop and see some downside in my video from yesterday. That is what played out so far. And that was especially prevalent because of how we saw SPY and the QQQ performing, not to mention some negative news about Tesla. So... Tesla got some bad news while the market ended up selling off. Tesla also ended up following the entire trend, and that's why we ended up seeing it tipping quite a bit. But the question is, what's happening for tomorrow? Why is tomorrow going to be a very, very big day since we have very important data coming out? And why I think there's going to be a very, very big test coming to Tesla stock looking at the current levels. So let's first talk about some data, and then I'm going to talk about Tesla news and such. For tomorrow, it's going to be Friday, June 21st, 2024. One thing worth noting is that 15 minutes after the market ends up opening, we have the SP Global Composite PMI, Manufacturing and Services PMI data report coming out. This will be very important for these different sectors and giving us more insights on how they're looking. And it's going to give us good uh, measures for the strength of the economy, which is going to be important for the Fed and such. So look for some volatility 15 minutes after the market opens when this data comes out. That's going to be pivotal for how we end up moving forward. And then for other pieces of data, we just have like home sales and such, nothing too crazy. Now, I also want to call out that for the options chain for SPY, we have basically about uh, 1.5 plus million calls expiring. And we have over 3.5 million puts expiring with a 2.28 puts to call ratio. Why is this important? Because with all the options expirations, we'll be watching to see what the market makers try to pull this time. Will they try to help the puts, the shorts, and get more of these from out of the money to in the money? Or are they going to do something very different, just kind of keep the market sideways before anything else? This is going to be a big factor because of quadruple witching and all of these options expirations will cause manipulation tomorrow. So I anticipate lots of manipulation. I think that there's going to be uh, some wild price action thanks to this, and we'll see how this ends up affecting Tesla and the markets. Now for earnings, just know that Friday before the market opens, we have CarMax announcing their earnings. Shouldn't be anything too crazy, but we'll see what this leads to. And then also for the fear and greed index, this is currently at the fear mode. Uh, this is the overall emotion driving the market. This is the overall sentiment. Momentum is still in greed mode because we're still at a very, very high value. This is more relative to where we are compared to the 125 daily moving average. So momentum is greedy because the market's in a very, very high valuation right now. But sentiment is still fearful because people are kind of afraid of how high the market happens to be. Uh, what else can kind of like happen from there and kind of factors like that. Now, I just wanted to call out the puts and call option positioning is currently greedy, uh, but it's starting to go up a bit and it's becoming less greedy because we're starting to see a little bit more put buying. And the market volatility is kind of neutral. We're not really seeing much of a shift here, so we will see what this leads to as well. So I'll be waiting to see how things end up going. As far as Tesla goes, we had some very important announcements come out. There was a very, very important quote about how the robotaxi unveiling won't just be about the technology, but a very, very new chapter for Tesla, which is very, very awesome news. Driverless cars are going to be the future. That's what Musk has been talking about. And he said that it's something very, very extraordinary waits as time goes on. On top of all of this, Tesla's focus on the autonomous fleets. It's not new. They've been doing this for quite some time. But once this is actually officially launched, it is going to be something very, very huge for us as well. So I can't wait to see what this leads to, especially during the next RoboTaxi event. Now, there's also some big news that came out. Tesla's price targets was actually cut by RBC Capital's uh, analysts after re uh, revisiting the robo taxi. So what does this mean? Why are they doing this? Basically, we could see that many uh, RBC Capital's analysts have lowered their price target for Tesla to about $227 a share. That's down from the $293 price targets. They still have an uh, outperform rating for Tesla, which is great, but they're saying that uh, for the short term, uh, they're, they're thinking that th things are not going to be as bullish for Tesla. For the longer term, they think that the robo-taxi and, and the, the new uh, developments will help it become a lot more bullish. And I think that's going to have a very, very big effect on their overall revenue. It's going to it's gonna make a very, very nice looking uh, you know, sharing model, for, at least for them going forward. So that's something else that's worth noting. That's actually some good news for Tesla. I also want to call out that when it comes to the way the market moves, uh, one second here, Elon Musk is also revealing that the new Hardware 5 release date 
Uh, it's going to be coming in the second half of 2025, basically. But it's not going to be called HW5. It's going to be called AI5 instead, which is very, very nice and futuristic, if anything. So pretty cool stuff for Tesla. Once this comes out, this is going to lead to very, very important updates, which are going to help Tesla not only with a bunch of different uh, hardware improvements, but it's going to help them in many different ways that are going to be unveiled very soon. But you can see that Tesla's been working on uh, uh, basically a giant GPU cooler in Texas, which is kind of cool. Uh, that's very, very useful. I can't wait to see what this leads to. And there's going to be a lot more developments right here. So one thing worth noting about the AI5 computer has 10 times the capacity of that of the H. W4 computer, and then Tesla's going to be making a whole software stack. So very, very cool stuff. Can't wait to see what else the future holds for that. So that is it, at least for the main uh, headlines for Tesla. Now we're just going to focus on one more thing right here. We basically have volume at about 56 million. So we're kind of dipping on low volume and short volume relative to price is still kind of going up a bit as we're seeing a bit more shorting. And the last factor is the fact that uh, GLJ research is giving Tesla basically a sell rating. So it's a little bit of a shift. And then the price price ratio is flat. It's not really doing much. And we're seeing more volatility, at least on some days. So Fridays do tend to be green only about 48% of the time. And we tend to see more volatility, at least in June. Not to mention the fact that we tend to see more green around noon. So those are some things worth noting. What do I see for Tesla moving forward? Honestly, guys, not looking that great. We actually ended up dipping down to 180 a share. I did mention we may pop and drop yesterday. And that is what ended up happening. Uh, for resistance, don't forget to be looking at the 183 area and also 185. For support, watch this 180 zone. That's where our 200 EMA on the hourly time frame happens to be. Now, if we do lose this, we'll be looking for a dip all the way down here towards this imbalance, towards 177. So I'll be watching to see if Tesla ends up dipping down there. So if we lose 180, look for 177 to 178 as support. And if we break past 183, I'll be looking at 185. What is looking more probable? Well, when you kind of zoom out on Tesla and look at this little double top projection, there is going to be a risk of it dipping a little bit lower. And there could be a retest of these uh, prior support levels. But I think that we're going to rebound a bit for uh, first retest like 183 or so. And just kind of consolidate right here for tomorrow. There could be a little downside later on, but I think that that depends on how will we hold 180. But I see a lot of sideways price action is the most likely possibility. Now for... The four hour time frame, I just wanted to call out that Tesla has not only a nice double top like structure, uh, but we're kind of turning right here. We're going to likely be approaching the 179.92 area. If we lose this, I'll be looking at 177. Once again, the same levels are kind of showing on the four hour. It depends on how will we hold 180. So I'll be watching that as well. And then finally, for the daily time frame, uh, the daily is also kind of slowing down. I think that we could be approaching. Uh, uh, a little bit more downside right here. I'm seeing some weakness right here on Tesla. But one thing worth noting is even if we, even if we do come down a bit on Tesla, as long as we're above 167, we could still rebound and push later on during the month. So Tesla's not necessarily dead or anything like that. It's just a little kind of like temporary pullback that I'm seeing so far on the chart. So for tomorrow, it looks to me like Tesla may actually kind of pop to about 183. If we fail to break it, look for a move back down to 180 and lots of sideways price action. Uh, there could even be a very, very short moment where we come below 180 to retest and grab liquidity down here before we try to pump again. So I'm seeing some more downside for Tesla. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens. And then we'll have to see how things go from there. Part of why I say that is because of SPY. Now on SPY, we can't turn to bearish just yet because of the fact that we need a follow through day for confirmation. The four hour is showing some contraction right here. You guys can see it uh, right about here. MACD is about to turn a little bit more in the negative direction. And then we also have this important 20 EMA around this 545 to 546 area to be watching for. So there is a little bit of weakness on this chart. When we look at, let me just double check this on the one hour time frame. SPY also has these key levels. If we turn bullish, you want to see it break past 548.5. If that breaks, we could do have potential to go back up. If we lose 546, SPY is going to be dipping all the way down to at least 544, in my opinion. If we don't get bought back up quickly like we did today, uh, then we have this previous supports becoming uh, previous resistance becoming support. And if that breaks, we'll be looking for more downside. SPY is on a bit of a downtrend. I am seeing some potential signs of a rejection, but we have to be watching for a change of market structure. So like I, like I said earlier, this is what SPY structure was like, right? When you go right here, we had this low right here. We made a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. It's continuing to uptrend very nicely. Now we're in a position where 
it's a little different. We made, you know, we broke this structure right here. 546 kind of broke today. We did close close to it. So if we establish another high here and we make a lower high, then we make this new low down here. That's going to be a sign that SPY is downtrending and that there's going to be a big shift. But we need one more day for confirmation. With all of the different factors coming out, right, we have all these different pieces of news coming out, all these different factors involving SPY. We have to wait and see, especially with the option chain for tomorrow. But what's very probable is we kind of pop and then drop for a new low and we end up going down to 544 soon. That's the most likely possibility. We'll see if that ends up being the case. For NVIDIA, like I said in my earlier video, in, uh, NVIDIA has some tough uh, resistance coming up, right? We went up to resistance. We got a rejection exactly as we predicted. So the question is, how is this going to move from here? We look kind of weak and we're at some key support at 130. When you look at the daily time frame, we have this big gap to fill all the way down here towards 125. And we have this big red bar right here. So this is looking kind of bearish to me. Now, it's possible NVIDIA tries to get a little rebound to about 134, and then we come back down. I think we're going to pop and drop tomorrow morning, but then we'll be watching, can we hold the notorious 130? If we hold it, then we could consolidate for a bit. If we lose it, we're going to come down to fill some of these gaps. I do see us coming down to at least 125. My guts tells me it's going to be popping and then dropping all the way down to 125, dragging the market lower. That looks more probable in my personal opinion. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin is also showing some indecision right now. But just to be very, very frank with everyone, I do see some more downside potential because when you look at the four hour Bitcoin is downtrending. We like, we're like we just below our 20 EMA. We're rejecting again and again and again. I think tomorrow we could be retesting 65,000, maybe a little bit higher. Then we'll be making our move back down to lower levels like 64,000. So I see a little pop and drop as a very likely, very probable possibility. So watch for that very, very carefully. For the QQQ, the QQQ, in my opinion, is looking a little bit more bearish, especially on the four-hour time frame. We have 480 as a key support. We'll have to watch and see if this holds on the QQQ if we lose this. I think we're easily going all the way down to about 478 and all the way down to these lower levels. So I do favor that as a stronger possibility. Like I said about SPY, the trend was bullish. We made higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. Now we're starting to shift here, breaking the structure. So this makes me think that there could be a little rejection coming. So if I go like this, I'll show you guys something interesting. QQQ is showing some weakness right here. We're actually at this key level. So I think that what's going to likely happen is we might retest our EMAs up here. Uh, 483 or so. And if we get a rejection, look for a retest of 480. If we lose this, we're going all the way down to about 478. If we hold this, we could rebound, but I do favor downside as a stronger possibility. Now for um, Apple stock, Apple's looking a little bit weaker right here. We could be looking for a trend shift. So if I actually hide our indicators, we have this high up here. We came down, made a lower high. We may just continue to dip. So you can see Apple is showing some weakness. Now, if we do rebound a bit, we have you know, it's possible we kind of retest this resistance around this 211 to 212 area that also aligns with our 20 EMA. However, the trend is still bearish on the four hours. So this kind of tells me that we might pop for the short term, but then drop for a little bit longer term. So basically, like tomorrow morning, we kind of pop a little bit. Then later on during the day, we start to drop. And that's the most likely possibility that I'm seeing. We still have this imbalance to fill and we still have our key supports. I'll be watching this. So here's how I interpret the chart. If we break, so we're going to likely push close to 212, right? If we hold this close above this, then we could rebound. If we reject off 212, we're going to be dipping all the way down to 206, in my opinion. And I think Apple's going to retest that area. So watch to see if you get a big rejection or not. I see a little pop coming, and maybe a rejection is the most likely possibility. I favor kind of like a pop and drop on Apple and more downside, though, just to be very frank. Uh, that is it, at least for my analysis for the main five. Now, guys, I'm going to go through a speed run and just go over the rest of these stickers very quickly, starting off with Palantir. Palantir is looking a little bit more bearish on the four hour time frame. It does look like it's going to dip lower. I think that we could be approaching 24.8. And if that fails us, we're going to be going all the way down to this previous resistance, all the way down to the 24.4 uh, area. So look for a little pop and drop. I think 24.8 is coming for more downsides than most likely possibility. Supermicro has a very similar setup as we're kind of turning on the four hour. I called out in the morning that this might be going up to 1,000, if not 1,020 in summer that we're going to reject. That's exactly where we ended up, re ended up rejecting. So now we're on a bit of a downtrend. 20 EMAs all the way here at 880, uh, 890, excuse me. So I think we could pop and then start dipping down to 890. That's the most likely possibility. This also aligns with previous 
resistance becoming supports. This looks like a key level. So I see a little bit more downside for super micro as the four hour looks a bit more bearish. Rivian is looking a little bit more bearish. We're actually dipping a bit right over here. I could be looking for more downside looking at this current trend, especially as we approach this $10 area. So I do see a little bit more downside as a strong possibility in the four hour. Watch for that very carefully. For so far, we're also looking a little bit weaker. Uh, we do have a slight divergence, so I think it might make its way up to 6.4, then come back down, just kind of consolidate for now. So look for a little pop and some sideways price action. It's a strong possibility. The IWM, remember what I called out yesterday? I said 202 is going to be tested if this rejects. Look for some downside. If it breaks down, we're going to see some upside to 204. What happened? We touched. We came very close to 202, and we rejected just like that. So with the four-hour kind of contracting right over here, I think that's... With 200.5 potentially being tested, we could be looking for a dip down to this imbalance all the way down to about 198. So I do favor some downside as a strong possibility. And we're making lower highs and lower lows. So I think that we could kind of pop and then drop and then start dipping a little bit lower. And there is a risk of the IWM Rose 2000 dipping down. Now, if we were to somehow break 202, then yes, we could turn back up, but that's looking less probable. It looks more probable as us dipping down towards 198, in my opinion. For AMD, AMD got some bullish news as part of why it ended up outperforming the markets, and we have a gap to fill. So as long as we hold above 160, I do see potential for 164. If we lose that, we'll be dipping, but I'll be watching that very carefully. For ARM, we're actually seeing a bit of a dip right over here. Uh, watch resistance around this 161 area. If we lose this, I'll be looking for one, uh, basically a retest of 156. So ARM is showing some signs of weakness. I'll be waiting for that. For Coinbase, we're showing some weakness right over here. I think that there is a risk of us retesting our 200 EMA. So I think we might retest 230.9 and try to balance. We'll see if it bounces or not. But I see a little bit more downside. We have a double top like structure. There is more potential downside coming. If we lose 230, I'll be looking for a move all the way down to 220. I'll be watching that as well. Amazon, on the other hand, is very, it's ironically very strong right now. We have a nice cup like structure. So either we form a cup, we come down from a cup and handle, or we just form a cup and we try to push a little higher for 187, as long as there's no bad news. But if we lose 184, I could turn back to bearish. As long as we're above it, we have potential to go higher. So we're forming a nice cup and handle and we look more bullish to me. For Meta, we're on a very, very sideways structure, kind of consolidating right over here. If we try to push higher, we'll be looking at 505. If we end up losing support, we'll be looking for a dip towards uh, 500 and then 496. So if we lose 500, watch 496. If we break past 500, we'll be looking at 505. It looks to me like it's going to try to push towards 504 to 505 and then maybe consolidate for a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to be very patient, if anything. For Microsoft, um, we're testing 443. It's showing some life right here. I think it's going to go a little higher. It's about 447, then come back down and trade sideways. So a pop and drop is very probable. Google is also trying to push on the four hour. It might try to make its way up towards about 178. But I'd still be a little careful because considering that there's like a head and shoulders forming. But remember, guys, these don't always play out. Sometimes they could be traps. So if we lose 176, we turn bearish. If we break past 180, we turn bullish. I think we're going to be pushing to 178 tomorrow and maybe trade sideways. That's all I'm seeing for now. So we'll see how it goes. GameStop is trying to turn on the four hour. I do see potential for us to go up to about 27. If that breaks, we have an imbalance to fill. And I think that 30 plus is coming. So I'll be watching for that. AMC. It's looking a little weak right here. We have a kind of like a head and shoulders like structure. We also have this gap to fill way down here. So I'm going to be looking to see if we end up dipping lower towards 4.68. And we'll see how things go with that. For DJT, we're dipping right now. We have this low all the way down here towards 22. There's a risk of this dipping. For the VIX, um, if the VIX breaks past 13.5, it's going to start breaking out. That's going to be a bearish signal for the markets. We're at resistance. So we'll see how the VIX does. It does have potential, especially since it has a nice inverse head and shoulders chip. I'll wait and see just to be safe. The 10 year Treasury yield is starting to turn on the four hour. We'll see if we break past 4.3. I'm going to be patient with this. It depends on what the Fed says. And the dollar, if this breaks past 105.8, I think 106 is coming. If it, it looks like it's going to push higher because the market has more downside potential. So we'll wait and see how it goes. But anyways, guys, uh, that is pretty much it for the video. As far as Tesla goes, we are starting to downtrend just a bit. But watch that key support at 180. We could be looking for, once again, a little pop and drop like move for Tesla. And there is a little downside potential. We'll see how well 180 holds. To me, it looks like it might dip a little lower. So just be very careful and we'll give this the time it needs. However, despite Tesla dipping, just know that this is just a short-term projection. The medium term still has a much larger inverse head and shoulders that's still technically in it intact right now so this could still lead to a big bounce in tesla later on during the month if not by july but it's just taking a long time to play out it's taking its time so give tesla some patience give it the time it needs and i'll see you guys very soon on the next one tomorrow morning to break down the data thank you for listening guys i appreciate every single one of you have a great day have a great evening and i'll see you guys soon tomorrow morning thanks again and peace out